Welcome to Episode 9 of the Schaefer Creative Podcast. This is the Christmas edition. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for you have done a great thing unto me. In this episode, we will be talking to the director of the Christmas movie, The Promise, Birth of the Messiah, and my husband, Todd Schaefer. Fear not, blessed shepherd, I bring you news of great joy, good news for all the people, unto you a son is born, the Savior Christ the Lord, fear not for your king. So it's been a long time since I've looked up the the promise on Amazon. There's 96 reviews. I remember the first year it came out. We were happy to see one or two reviews. And I love what some of the people are saying here. Sean Merivale says, My kids love it, and I find the songs to be very catchy and fun. This is one of my favorite reviews. R. Schultz says, Wonderful, beautiful. My wife and I purchased it. We both said, this is beautiful. It's beautiful on a number of levels. At several points, we were brought to tears. How did this come about? Because you don't consider yourself to be a musician, and now you've made a musical. I never imagined myself writing a musical. It just just happened. In fact, I came into it kicking and screaming. Well, they have to hear that story. (laughs) It wasn't my idea to begin with. It was my producer's idea. He came into my office one day and said he'd like to make a baby Jesus film, which is strange for him. You know him. He's he's not the religious type. So it was odd to me that he would say that. That was, that was something coming right out of the blue. And you were so excited because you were Christian and now you had a chance to make a movie about Christ. No, I I just had dread in, <laughs> in my mind about it. Low budget, religious animation. It just didn't appeal to me at all. So he was actively putting together the financing for this already. And he said he had a meeting to go to. He'd be back in an hour. He wanted me to figure out how I would approach the film so that he could finish the budget. And all I wanted to do was make this go away. (laughs) So I turned to the Gospel of Luke, which contains the majority of the Nativity story, to look for reasons why this would be a terrible film to make. Oh, no. (laughs) And I found two reasons. The first is that Mary and Joseph are passive protagonists. They don't do anything. And in film, that's deadly. In any story, it's not good. But especially in film... Because everything Uh, happens to them. Right. Everything is happening to them, and they're just responding. So they're not driving the story any way whatsoever. The second reason is because the nativity story in Luke is filled with Hebrew Old Testament poetry. So a lot of the language is obscure, and it's almost 50% of the story is taken up with this poetry. And... I have to deal with that kind of thing because of my understanding of scripture. I don't want to be pulling things out. And I knew enough about those poetic moments that they were integral to the story. So if you take those out, you lose something in the story. So I had to figure out how to deal with them. And the only way I could figure out how to deal with those things was to make it a musical. Since it's lyrical and and likely much of it was sung. I don't know that all of it was sung, but... Uh, sc- scholars say that it was likely sung. So he comes back and I tell him why we we need to abandon this idea and he lights up. He says, a musical? I think I can get more money for that. Oh, no. That can be even more profitable. <laughs> and so that's how our nativity story became My a musical. My name is John. That's right, his name is John. Not Zachariah, David, Mark, or Luke, his name is John. I know you think I'm bad. That's how I name the lad. I'm not to blame. God chose the name for my boy John. 
For these past nine months, my speech has been for bad. Grunting, barking, clapping, moaning, you must think me mad. Now my tongue set free, how can you disagree? There's no need to pick apart my family tree. Praise the Lord, he's come to redeem us. He's remembered his promise of long ago. He'll raise a horn of salvation, the Messiah of whom the prophets foretold. I've never seen those passages addressed in any movie. Yeah, the most nativity stories... In fact, I can't even think of a nativity story that deals with those Hebrew poems. So kudos to you to not just pulling them out because they're not important. Well, I don't know that I I handle them as well as I could have. Looking back, I would have done some things differently, but um, I knew they needed to be included because they provide forward movement to the story, and that made the writing of the lyrics difficult um, because these aren't just standalone songs that somebody just, the whole show stops and then they, they start singing. These songs contribute to the story and keep it moving forward. Uh, so everything we did was designed for that forward motion of the songs. So how do you take something that's difficult to understand in a passage like Horn of Salvation and make it so that a five-year-old sitting watching it doesn't yawn and want to play with Legos? <laughs> well, you got to keep the songs entertaining throughout. They're not going to know what it means. The fact that we're highlighting it as a song is something important, and putting it back into the story, I think, is the most we can say about what we did with that. Because those, those things are very obscure, and they take time to unpack what they actually mean. You should release a Bible study that goes along with Promise the Musical that explains those songs and why they're there. We thought about that, but we're filmmakers. <laughs> he will be great, the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give him the throne of his father. He shall reign over the house of Israel, and his kingdom will never end. Remember when I came in and did the motion capture as the character of Mary? Why did you guys use motion capture instead of just animating it? The idea behind the motion capture was that we would be able to produce the base uh, that the animators would work off of. So it would allow us to stage everything, especially since there was a lot of dancing. We could stage everything, get that edited so that we had some sort of benchmark musically, and then the animators would work on top of that to something that was already defined for them by the mocap artists. So you had to hire actors? We hired dancers, we hired some folks from Cirque du Soleil, and we also had to hire um, actors. And it's hard to find dancers who can act. Uh, There are some, but... Oh, that's why I came in. And that's why we brought you in to help with the acting. Mary interacting with baby Jesus after he's born. Mary's lullaby. Mary's lullaby. I remember that part because I was doing with baby Jesus what I used to do with my babies when they were that age. Close your eyes while I sing. Sleepy by, oh sleep tonight. Sleep tight tonight, my king. There will be plenty of day tomorrow to hear your people's woes And plenty of light to marshal the fight and bring down your kingdom's foes And I'm certain there will be a little time left for me To nibble on your little toes, sleep tight tonight So when I look at those hands, I think, oh, that reminds me of Grayson and McKenna and Tristan and Sawyer when they were little. So that'll be forever part of our family. I'll have to go back and look at that. Yeah, it's so cute. I didn't realize that. Yeah, I love it. Which brings us to Mary's Lullaby. That is not part of scripture. And it's one of the songs. So how did that come about? Like, there... The Magi are missing, Anna is missing. Well, this comes down to budget constraints. We originally set out to do a 45-minute film. While we got into it, we realized we needed more time and wanted to make it a feature film. We actually 
I actually wrote the script for a feature-length version with Herod and, and the Magi. I even started working on a, uh, one of Herod's songs, which was quite funny. But at the end of the day, we just didn't have the money to complete it. We had to cut it back. And what we did was we just consolidated it all into the story that Luke tells. So Luke finishes his, t- his story with Simeon at the temple. Oh, that's great. So you're faithful to the Gospel of Luke, and that's why the Magi and Herod aren't included. Right, because they're in Matthew. Great. Although we did tell a little bit of Joseph's story, which came from Matthew. But then the lullaby was put on at the end because I just felt like we had to give it a sense of closure. And I don't think we had it just ending at Simeon. Mm. So I just imagine, well, what would have been, what would it have been like for Mary and Joseph that day to go to where, whatever inn they were staying at, and then Mary with her deep theological understanding of the Old Testament and being able to hear these amazing things that Simeon had uh, prophesied about her son, what kinds of things would have been going on in her mind? And I thought maybe we could build some irony in there because she's thinking about Jesus as this king, this conquering king, when in reality he's coming in as a king who's a suffering king, Mm -hmm. who's going to be uh, sacrificed on the cross. So I sort of did a little bit of a play on that theology there, Mm -hmm. hopefully to give it a nice wrap up. Into those sparkling eyes Who is it Who looks back at me These pudgy little hands The strength that the one day bear This precious little head A king crown it's sure to wear And those lips so soft and sweet Mighty words they'll declare And here we this little child of promise of whom the prophets foretold this glorious king of whom angels sing a champion to be extolled all wrapped up in this tiny babe who sleeps snugly by my side God's promise to be behold God's promise to What's your favorite memory from making this film? I guess, I w- I'm not sure I would say it's a favorite memory. It's one that stands out when we were recording Mary's Magnificat. Uh, Clara, who was the voice of Mary, finished the end of that song. And you will understand it better knowing the song. But at the end of her first recording of the Magnificat, she just burst into tears and uh, the composer rushed in and they hugged and it was a touching moment oh i didn't know that my soul magnifies the lord and my spirit rejoices in god my savior for you have done a great thing unto me holy Holy is your name, you who are gracious and merciful. Yes, I will magnify your name. So there were songs, a lot of songs we added, mainly because my inspiration was uh, Les Miserables. I mean, I'm not a musical kind of person, but Les Mis, I really enjoyed I tried to pattern some of my decisions based on Les Mis. Which was completely sung through, which brings us to your next movie. Which is almost completely sung through, more than than The Promise was. So you've gone from Promise, Birth of the Messiah, to your next movie, Prodigal. The musical. The musical. And why a musical? Again, (laughs) since Um, you're not musical. When we originally packaged together the project for The Promise and its financing and all that, we did it as a series of three films. 
all those three films were intended to be packaged together and sold, and so they had to have a common thread. So since Promise was a musical, the next two had to be musicals as well. Prodigal is the kind of story that's very internal, which is perfect for musicals. So that's why we transitioned into Prodigal as a musical. Did you try to run away kicking and screaming from making the Prodigal? No, because I knew it was coming. It was part of the package. I had done it once. All the parts were in play. And so uh, I just thought, well, I'll just do better than what I did on Promise in Prodigal. And it's exciting, right? Because for the voice talent, you were able to go to Broadway. Yes. We cherry-picked people from Broadway to be our lead vocal talent, which was an interesting process because we did our casting via YouTube. And so when we contacted these Broadway performers, their only question was, you mean you're offering us this project without having to audition for it? We're in. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how good you are on Broadway, there's always an audition. So we, we were able to get some great people. We got Jeff Crady, uh, Nikki Renee Daniels, and um, Jeremy Kushner. Oh, they did so great. I remember yeah. being in the recording studio and the fact that they're actors, first of all, so they've got the character down, and then that their voices are amazing. It's one of, one of the most amazing things I've ever watched. And we had a great composer on this one, too. I mean, we've been fortunate to have the people on Promise that we did um, they did a wonderful job, but working with Romano was a lot of fun. And he's known for... Romano has composed for Celine Dion, Luciano Pavarotti, Jose Carrera. I mean, he's he's that level of composer with all that kind of experience. And he's more pop-oriented. So the music uh, on Prodigal is uh, phenomenal. We really have a fen phenomenal soundtrack. What woman of you who has ten silver coins and discovers one is lost? Does she not light a lamp and carefully sweep to search for the one that is lost? And then when she finds it, does she not rejoice, oh, rejoice? And then, when she goes out, does she not call her friends and neighbors and say, Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice with me. The coin that was lost, I have found, I have found. Rejoice! That was lost, I have found, I have found Rejoice I'll tell you in the same way as there is More joy in heaven Over one sinner who repents Than for all of the righteous And the animation is doubly good. I mean, when you look at the difference between the first movie and the second movie, the animation just, how did that happen? Well, we had more experienced people. We had uh, a much stronger pipeline. It took us a while to build the, out the pipeline. Promise was our test bed. And by the time we got the Prodigal, um, we had much more behind us. So what is the film length of the Promise? Well, Prodigal. the Promise is 45 minutes. It's a direct-to-video. Uh, the Prodigal is going to be a feature film. It's going to be 80 to 85 minutes when it's finally finished. Yay! And when will it be finally finished? <laughs> it's a good question. I know uh, on our Glorious Films uh, Facebook page and in my email, I get people all the time asking me when Prodigal is going to be done. And if you've been following it, you know it was like the, the first 
image we put up, it was to be released in 2015, then 2016, then 2017, then 2008. And I just changed it to 2018, and I get all these people responding just for me changing the image. Yeah, it's going to be out. We've been waiting for forever. And yes, we have been waiting for forever. We've been working on it for forever. So 2019. Like. Probably have to change it again. Um, right now, our funding has dried up. So we're actually closed at the moment while we're raising the completion funds. And once we get the completion funds, we will hire the people that we need and finish the film. So you're this close. We're 80% done. Yay! But distributors need six months to respond to something and be able to get it out into the market and be prepared. So we have to get it financed in the next few months or else it's going to end up being released in 2020. And we are hoping we can release a trailer or a clip from The Prodigal uh, in the coming months. And where should they go to find that? Well, you want to follow us on Glorious Films' Facebook page. Facebook.com slash Glorious Films. To get the latest on any movie that you're making, yes. currently right. Prodigal the Musical. Right. And where can they find The Promise? The Promise is on Amazon.com. Amazon.ca, Amazon.uk, or CO.uk. Now, we are preparing uh, a streaming version that we were trying to get up before Christmas. I don't think it's going to happen. Uh, so sometime next year, um, the streaming version will be up. And we also have a Spanish version that is not subtitled. We hired some folks to rewrite it in Spanish and re-record all the voices in Spanish. So, And it actually works very, very well. You can also follow me on my website, toddschafer.com. I periodically put up stuff. It tends to be up to date. Uh, not not a lot of material, though. But my family's website, SchaeferCreative.studio, is where we're actively putting up a lot of material. And anything that happens with uh, these films will be uh, posted here. We should watch this tonight. We can have a family movie night and watch The Promise and eat popcorn. I, I fall into Orson Welles' camp with the direct... not Not in terms of talent, but... Orson Welles always said, I'd much rather imagine them to be better than they actually are. Okay, so we will sit and watch the movie, and you will yes. sit on the couch next to us with the blindfold on. It, no, it's just, it's too painful for me. I, we'll I feed see, you popcorn. I see all the mistakes, all the things that we should have done better, but <laughs> and I think a lot of directors are like that, so. I'm, but we want I'm you to unusual. be with us. It's a family night. Yeah. You'll do it for us, right? Well, maybe. <laughs> You're so mean. The sun will shine down upon us who live in darkness, the shadow of death. His light will illuminate our footsteps and guide us to the path of peace. My boy. His name is John, that's right, his name is John. That's Zachariah, David, Mark, or Luke, his name is John. And so you understand, look here, I raise my hand. I promise I will never doubt the Lord again. His name is John. My first guest on Conversations with Creatives in the New Year will be Michael Greenholt who I had the pleasure of working with on a Warner Brothers project that will be released in November 2019. He's now an animation supervisor at Disney TV. This is not a podcast you're going to want to miss. Thank you for joining us on this edition of the Schaefer Creative Podcast. You will find show notes for this episode and more information about Schaefer Creative at schaefercreative.studio.